Hi, welcome to today's Bible on the Beach. Now, today we're going to be in Acts chapter 8, uh, verses 25 through uh, 38. And I want to remind you that today's all about disciples making disciples and churches planting churches so that as many people can be in God's family all over the world uh, and in every space and in every place. So that's the heart behind this. And today we're going to pick it up in Acts chapter 8, verses 25. It says, After Peter and John had testified uh, and taught the word of God in that city, they returned to Jerusalem, stopping at many Samaritan villages along the way to preach the hope of the gospel. So now... Remember, they started out with a large church in Jerusalem, persecution came, then everyone was scattered to fulfill Jesus' promise, you'll be my witness in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. Now what's interesting is, when the church was big in Jerusalem, they didn't go out to Judea and Samaria really of their own volition. It took persecution to scatter them. Just like it does in our life, God turns up the heat to keep us going into the spaces and places where he wants people to hear and love and follow him. Is it hard? Of course it's hard. It's hard to give up the comfort and security of an environment to go and make a disciple and go and do God's will. This is exactly what they were doing in Acts. Uh, this is we're, we're only in Acts chapter 8, and we can already see the people filled with the Holy Spirit going out into the villages. There was no fanfare. There was no celebrityism. There was no look at me. This was hard work. This was all spirit-led people going in relationship, having food with people, God doing miracles, using the simple relationship and teaching of the Bible to spread the kingdom. It was a very exciting time in Acts <clears throat> chapter 8. Now they stopped in all of these villages and they preached. Let me ask you a question. Where was the last place you went to? and to share the Lord. Was it at your work? Was it at your school? Was it at a business? Was it at an event? Did you actually go somewhere and travel? God wants to use you to share his love to people that don't know him anywhere and everywhere you go. Now look at verse 26. It says, Then the Lord's angel said to Philip, Now go south from Jerusalem on the desert road to Gaza. He left immediately on his assignment. Along the way he encountered an Ethiopian who believed in the God of the Jews, who was the minister of finance for Candace queen of Ethiopia. Now, isn't this interesting that God, the Holy Spirit, puts it on their heart to go out. God had a divine appointment. He had someone that was in a position of influence that he wanted them to influence. He put a position and influence in their, a position of influence in their path, and God wanted to share the gospel so that they could get, so that they could be impacted and carry the teachings of Jesus. Now, this is very interesting what happens here. There's a lot to learn. <clears throat> it says he was a finance minister. Cool. He was on his way home from worshiping God in Jerusalem. As he rode along in his chariot, he was reading from the scroll of Isaiah. So God had a divine appointment. This man was a sincere person. This man was sincerely seeking God. And they used this miracle and this encounter to bring these people into God's family. It's very exciting. As he rode along in his chariot, now the Holy Spirit said to Philip, Go and walk alongside the chariot. Now when was the last time God told you to go somewhere and to seek someone out to explain Jesus to them? God does this. He did it then, and he does it uh, today. So Philip ran to catch up. As he drew closer, he overheard the man reading from the scroll of Isaiah. The prophet Philip asked him, Sir, do you understand what you're reading? The man asked, How can I possibly make sense of this without someone explaining it to me? So you see, people have to have God explain to them in a practical way, in their language, in a way that they understand. That's why, again, we go into different cultures and languages and spaces and places so that we can do a good job explaining uh, who Jesus is to people. Now, <clears throat> so he invited Philip up to his chariot to sit with him. The portion from Isaiah he was reading was this. He was led away to the slaughter like a lamb to be offered. He was like a lamb that is silent before those who sheared him. He never opened his mouth. In his lowliness, justice was stripped away from him, and who could fully express his struggles, for his life was taken from the earth. So he explains how Jesus was the lamb, he was the sacrifice for all of us. You know, Jesus died on the cross for our sins, so that we could be forgiven of our sins. He was perfect, we're not, God put all the sin on him to, to, to pay for the penalty of sin, and we just say, Jesus, I wanna follow you, you're perfect, you're awesome, you're loving, you're wonderful, I wanna follow you and love you today. In fact, in fact right now, 
You might even say, God, I invite you into my heart. I know I'm not perfect. I know you are. Would you forgive me and help me to love and follow you? And God will do it. Now, <clears throat> you look at verse 34. He says, the Ethiopian asked Philip, can you tell me who the prophet is speaking of? Is it himself or another man? Philip started with the passage and shared with him the wonderful message of Jesus. As they were traveling down the road, the man said, look, here's a pool of water. Why don't I get baptized right now? Isn't this interesting? God has the, divine, the guys worshiping early in the day. In one day, in one day, he hears the gospel, follows Jesus, he gets baptized. Philip replied, if you believe with your heart, I will baptize you. The man said, I believe that Jesus is the anointed one, the son of God. Let me ask you a question. Have you been baptized? Uh, if not, do it today. Call me, text me, or have a friend take you down to the beach or pool, any body of water, or do even a bathtub. And God will use you, God will use that symbolic act, the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus, the death, burial, resurrection of our lives as we follow him, follow his example. The, the Ethiopian stopped his chariot and they went down to the water and Philip baptized him. So in one day, a guy hears the gospel, follows Jesus, and gets baptized. <clears throat> When they came up out of the water, Philip was suddenly snatched up by the Spirit of the Lord and instantly carried away to the city of Ashdod, where he reappeared, preaching the gospel in that city. Crazy. So God sends Philip to preach to this Ethiopian unit, the finance minister, and in one experience, presents the gospel. A guy follows Jesus. A guy gets baptized. God snatches him, snatches him up in a cloud, transport, transports him to another area because he had a, another assignment for him to do. You know, God can supernaturally move you from one assignment to another. Did you know that? God can supernaturally move you from one assignment to another. Are you open to it? Do you believe that God can supernaturally move you from one assignment to another? You should be, because that's what he did with Philip. This man never saw Philip again. <clears throat> he returned to Ethiopia full of joy. Philip, however, traveled on to all the towns of that region, bringing in the good news until he arrived in Caesarea. What a crazy story. Hey, God works in crazy ways. God can send you to talk to someone. They can follow God. They can get baptized. And then God will supernaturally move you to do something else. But let me ask you a question. Do you have any Ethiopian people in your life, people that you think are far from God or another, another group of people you don't like or another culture that you don't like? This guy was different than him culturally, different than him educationally. He was a finance minister. He was different from Philip in every possible way, and God told him to go share the Lord with them, and God used him supernatural. When was the last time God used you to talk to someone from a different language, a different culture, a different race, a different educational background, and even a different occupation and a different class? God puts all those things in our heart. It's called being led and being empowered and being filled with the Holy Spirit. In fact, what I'd like us to do right now is invite God to work in our hearts like he worked through Philip in this story. God, would you work in my life in the way that you worked in Philip? God, would you work in my heart in the way that you worked through Philip? God, would you use me supernaturally the way <clears throat> that you used Philip? In Jesus' name, amen. Man, I love doing this. I'm so stoked that you tuned into Bible on the Beach today. I hope that God's word is an encouragement to you. If you're getting something out of this, please encourage somebody else to follow along and so they can grow in their relationship with God. And until next time, I hope you have an awesome day.